programs such as this. It's absolutely essential. So going further, I'd like to invite now our next speaker, Ms. Saira Shamim, the Deputy Director and Deputy Representative. Ms. Shamim has been involved in the field of, uh, without taking much of our time, I'd invite the lady. <laughs> Thank you. So, as I mentioned earlier, Your Excellency Ratepel Nanitekau, Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives of Fiji and uh, UN Goodwill Ambassador for HIV and AIDS in the Pacific, uh, thank you for all the support that you've given to HIV and AIDS and being a true champion of this uh, over the many years and also the many years to come. Your Excellency John Fix, Australian High Commissioner to Fiji. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Butler, Director and Representative of United Nations Population Fund, Pacific Sub Regional Office, uh, Development Partners, Ministry of Health and Medical Services staff, and members of the media uh, that are here today. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, DFAT's uh, continued uh, contributions for the Transformative Agenda 2018 to 2022, committing $30 million uh, to the Pacific and aspiring to improve the sexual and reproductive health of Pacific Islanders, including Fiji. We also acknowledge UNFPA for supporting Fiji's commitment to ICP D25 by ensuring zero unmet need for family planning, zero preventable, preventable maternal death, and zero gender-based violence and harmful uh, practices. UNFPA has been playing an instrumental part by supplying free contraceptives to Fiji for many years, and the Ministry is very thankful for this support and again thank you again uh, for the continued support that's been alluded to uh, uh, earlier. I also want to acknowledge the family planning New South Wales for developing Fiji's new training package aligned to WHO handbook for providers. The WHO definition of family planning as we know it is to allow individuals and couples to anticipate and attain the desired number of children and the spacing and timing of their births. It is important not only for the parents but also for the child. It is achieved through the use of contraceptive methods and the treatment of involuntary infertility. A woman's ability to space and limit her pregnancies has a direct impact on her health and well-being as well as the outcome of each pregnancy. Family planning is one of those strategies, probably the only one that has cross-cutting impact on almost all the sustainable development goals. And one such, one such component is HIV and AIDS. While we are here to launch the Family Planning Trainers of Trainers, we also acknowledge that today, the 1st of December, marks an important date on the calendar. In remembering World AIDS Day, while the barrier methods of family planning prevent HIV, they are important in preventing unintended pregnancies in women living with HIV and the further transmission of HIV till they are virally suppressed. While we identify that Fiji has two majors pertaining to health in adults, and this is something that is important for us to continue to understand. It's other non-communicable diseases, which are diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and so forth, and communicable diseases, which may be HIV, AIDS, leptospirosis, typhoid, dengue, and COVID-19, uh, which is a pandemic at the moment. We realize and acknowledge that HIV is a behavioral disease, but it is preventable, and treatment is available for all Fijians free of charge. But the Honorable uh, uh, Speaker of Parliament has alluded to is the fact that in this pandemic, there have been uh, many uh, literature written about the challenges that have been uh, in countries such as Fiji in meeting the normative needs, such as programs around HIV AIDS, the vaccination, immunization programs. But uh, we are uh, very blessed in Fiji because we're able to contain the virus very early so then we can then, within the communities, carry on with our programs. And I think this is something that other countries around the world continue to be challenged with as you read the literature coming out from those countries. We have cumulatively 1,260 confirmed cases of HIV. And just this year alone, from January to October, in the last 10 months, we've had 124 new cases and 41% are females living with HIV. While this number might be alarming, given that it's over 10 months, but there, be, there may be some reasons why we can be able to uh, ascertain why we have those numbers. One of it is the fact that we have a lot more awareness and also the fact that with the measles and the COVID-19 
we in the Ministry of Health have better profiled our communities. And because we better profiled the communities and raised more awareness, we now have the opportunity to be able to make more diagnosis. Our ministry has recognized that Fijians cannot have good sexual health in the absence of good reproductive health and vice versa. Therefore, there is a move to integrate the two programs into one, sexual and reproductive health and rights. And uh, sir, we've taken on board uh, what you shared with us today and we want to make sure that uh, we will not discriminate anyone that comes to any of our 220 facilities. And also want to make it clear that discrimination is a black hole that knows no end. It's a slippery slide and uh, continue to push uh, this issue with our Minister of Health uh, uh, staff all over Fiji that we should never involve ourselves in any form of discrimination to anyone seeking support and seeking our services in any of our facilities. Now more than ever, it has become more evident for us to plan our families, space our children as they are born so they are able, they're able to give adequate attention and love to each of them as they grow. Have a required number so that we as parents can support them to be successful in life. One third of our population are youth, and today I take this opportunity to remind them and remind you that are youth in this room to take responsibility for your lives. Practice safe sex as the health facility and staff stand ready to support you in your journey for healthy adulthood. No girl child or no young lady should ever leave school or commit suicide just because they are pregnant. We have contraceptives available to assist them to enjoy their sexual life safely and reasonably while they complete school or tertiary education. And if in any time they uh, feel as if uh, they are pregnant and they need someone to talk to, we open our doors, all the 220 facilities. They're more than welcome to come and see us. And we are more than welcome to support them. Today we are launching the revised family planning training package for healthcare workers to upskill our staff to provide quality services to our women and men, including adolescents and those with special circumstances to reach their full potential and practice their reproductive health rights as enshrined in the 2013 Constitution. Today also is the 1st of December and we recognize this Global Day, World Age Day in our fight against HIV AIDS. We also recognize those who have HIV AIDS and their families and those who have passed on, not only in Fiji, but around the world. And uh, we say to them that we stand with them, we stand to support them. The master trainers trained in the next three weeks will assist us to roll training to all divisions and subdivisions in Fiji, to assist us to reach the most unreachable, provide access to family planning and reduce the unmet need. It is my vision that all the 220 facilities becomes a conduit for all the services that we have. A nursing station may not be able to offer infertility services, but it could be a network to provide that service. It is anticipated that this defect funded initiative, the Fiji government will be able to meet its commitment to ICPD 25 and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals through the, uh, as mentioned above. I also want to at this stage congratulate all the health staff that are here and also for development partners who are working hard together so that we can be able to keep Fiji COVID contained. All of us participate. While some might be in the isolation and quarantine facilities, it is those of you and those of us that are back now doing the normative functions of the Ministry of Health are as important. And I want to thank you and congratulate you for the way that you <coughs> worked hard within Fiji to keep our community safe. I want to finish with a Moala story because we heard so much about Moala today. I remember when we were very young doctors, my wife and I, and we used to have a lot of banters. My wife is up in the, her, her village is in the mountains of Neitasi. It took me five hours walk to get there. But anyway, we used to have a friendly banter about which place is bigger, uh, which Dalo is bigger. And uh, she had never been to Mola. So I've been to her village and I saw, and I said to myself inwardly, and I never told her, this place is quite big. The mountains are huge. And Dalo is bigger, but I never told her that because it was a friendly banter. And then, unfortunately, or fortunately, one day my wife had to go and pick up a case from Walla. So she went, uh, sir, and she came back, and I was waiting uh, with an abated breath what she will say. And she said, my dear, your island is actually big. I said, yes, it is a continent. <laughs> I thought it was just uh, quite a few palm trees and no, no, 
Dubai it's, it's actually a very big place yes I'm very impressed and then I decided to push it even more so I said did you see the mountains behind my village <laughs> she looked back at me and said my dear those are hills <laughs> so I want to finish by saying today this year has been a mountain but we look back now and now and we we remember in all the challenges and sacrifices that we went together as a minister of health and we can say that they will look like mountains but they were actually hills so I'd like to thank you for your work thank you sir for your support thank you Australia for supporting us, for making our mountains become hills. Thank you very much and God bless you. Individuals who have come, participants who have come in for training today, UNA is Goodwill Ambassador for HIV in the Pacific. Honorable Minister for Health and Medical Services, Dr. Ephraimi Wangadimbete, Your Excellency, Mr. John Fuchs, Australian High Commissioner to Fiji, the UNFPA Director and Representative, Dr. Jennifer Butler, Country Director for UNAIDS Pacific, Ms. Renata Ram, the staff in Ministry of Health and Medical Services, members of the positive community living with HIV, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Nisa Ambulabinaka, Salaamu Alaikum, Namaste. I am indeed proud and honoured to be here this morning for the launch of the Family Planning Training of Trainers, which as you are all aware is taking place on a very significant day, World AIDS Day. This year, has been like no other and despite it all we can proudly stand together to commemorate the continuation of our HIV response. Today is a day for taking stock of the challenges that humanity has faced this year. COVID-19 is threatening the progress that the world has made in health and development over the past 20 years, including the gains we have made against HIV. Like all epidemics, it is widening the inequalities that already existed. However, the global HIV response was off track even before the COVID-19 pandemic. But the collision of COVID-19 and HIV has set it back further. COVID-19 is a wake-up call for the world to strengthen health systems. Had health systems and social safety nets being stronger, the world would have been better positioned to slow the virus and withstand its impacts. Nevertheless, we must seize the opportunity that COVID-19 has provided. For the first time in many years, health has become the front and the center of the world to show how destructive a pandemic can be. Global interest in infection diseases, infectious diseases is higher than ever before. We must build on this in global solidarity and shared responsibility. World AIDS Day is also a day to remember the millions of people who have lost their lives to AIDS-related illnesses, many of whom died because they could not access HIV services because of stigma, because of discrimination, and because of criminalization of key populations. 
On this World AIDS Day, the theme, quote, global solidarity and shared responsibility, unquote, requires us to view global health responses, including the AIDS response, in a way, a new way, it requires the world to come together. And that is what the world has been doing and is still doing and will be doing in the foreseeable future. This pandemic has shown us in a most painful way that all countries are connected and that we must be ever vigilant. In coming together in solidarity, we need to ensure that responsibilities are shared in such areas as one, health financing. Governments must come together and find new ways to ensure that health care is fully funded. No country can do it alone. Domestic and international funding for health must be increased. While Fiji contributes 80% of domestic funding towards HIV programming, we need to ensure that this is sufficient to implement effective services. Two, that health systems are strengthened. Investments in the AIDS response in the past few decades have helped to strengthen health systems and have been supporting the COVID-19 response. But more needs to be done to further strengthen our health systems and protect our healthcare workers. Three, access is ensured. Life-saving medicines, vaccines, and diagnostics must be considered as public goods. There must be global solidarity and shared responsibility to ensure that no individual, community, or country is left behind in accessing life-saving health commodities. Though ARVs are free to all Fijians under the 2011 HIV law for life, we need to ensure that accessibility and availability to all those who need it is a must and an ongoing reality. Four, human rights are respected. A human rights approach applied everywhere will produce sustainable results for health. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the fault lines in society and how key populations have been left behind in many parts of the world. Studies have shown that stigma and discrimination is still high in Fiji. Stigma and discrimination against people living with HIV, sex workers, and LGBTI communities is still a pressing issue in Fiji, especially from healthcare workers. 60% of female sex workers surveyed in Fiji reported avoiding HIV testing due to fear of stigma from healthcare providers, as did more than 30% of homosexual and other men who have sex with men. HIV testing among these key populations is low. 25% female sex workers and 42% men who have sex with men. Five, 
the rights of women and girls and gender equality are at the center. The COVID-19 pandemic has significantly affected women's livelihoods, which has been disproportionately affected by lockdown measures and lockdowns have resulted in an increase of violence against women in household settings. In Fiji, the National Domestic Violence Helpline recorded a significant increase in calls in the month of April, around 527 calls, compared to 87 in February and 187 in March. Reports show that close to 50% of women are reporting a correlation between COVID-19 and increased violence linked directly to restrictions of movement and economic strain on families. These vulnerabilities are pushing our HIV response further off track. We must remember that focusing on these areas is expanding on the larger health response and has benefits in health equity, upholding the right to health, reducing sexually transmitted diseases, reducing unwanted pregnancies, and empowering individuals. The family planning training of trainers to be launched today is one aspect of health systems strengthening. This training is an integral part of reproductive health, which allows women and girls to access services freely and safely. This thought will improve the service delivery of family planning in the country and make it accessible to all Fijians. This will ensure that there is provision of condoms. You've heard of that. Condoms like the one I've got in my pocket. Right? Just like this. Have both. Male condom, a female condom. In this day and age, you've got to be gender conscious. I just can't carry one condom and not the other. Because I get shot down. When I show one, someone will say, what about the other one? You're not being gender conscious. So we have to be gender conscious. And the thing to remember is condoms saves lives. And it's got to be used wisely. The new pandemic that is around now for some time has shown that investing in health saves lives and economies. This requires investments on tackling the inequalities that are driving the HIV and COVID-19 pandemics. So let us all come together in solidarity and share the responsibility to reducing the impacts of HIV in a COVID-19 world. It is the duty of all of us to do so, and a noble duty it is. Happy World AIDS Day. Thank you. Vinakabukaleu. Shukriya. Bahut. Dainabad. Your Excellency Ratu Apelli Nilatakau, Speaker of the House and Goodwill Ambassador for HIV AIDS in Fiji. The Honourable Minister for Health and Medical Services, Dr. Iferemi Wagrabete, <coughs> excuse me, 
the country director for UNAIDS, Ms. Renata Ram, UNFPA representatives, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation to join you today, not only on the occasion of an important training session, but to recognise the work done by many in the field of HIV and AIDS as we commemorate World AIDS Day in Fiji. Today on World AIDS Day, we remember those who continue to live with HIV AIDS and those before them who lost their lives to this virus. And we thank those who have fought for the rights of those living with HIV and AIDS. And we also acknowledge those health workers who are in the room with us today, who have cared for and continue to care for those in impacted by HIV AIDS in Fiji. Australia is committed to supporting the Pacific to access family planning and reproductive health services. On the 9th of August in 2018, Australia and UNFPA entered into a partnership with six governments in the Pacific, Fiji, Kiribati, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga and Vanuatu, to ensure more women and young people in the Pacific can access sexual and reproductive health services. In the words of Australia's Ambassador for Women and Girls, the Honourable Sharman Stone, who was here in 2018, those services save lives, improve national health outcomes and promote economic growth. For women and girls, access to family planning in particular can have a profound impact, enabling them to stay in education for longer and participate equally in society and in the economy. Specifically, we're aiming to increase and improve the demand for modern family planning methods, increase the supply of services and commodities, and support strengthened and well-informed public policy development. Working with health workers in Fiji, strengthening their capacity to deliver high quality programs and integrating the provision of family planning services, counselling services and supporting women and girls at risk of violence against women is an essential part of addressing these goals. I'm delighted today to be with you to witness the commencement of a training of trainers that will meet your objective of having at least one trained healthcare worker in each of your 186 service delivery points in the country. I wish you and the facilitators well and look forward to hearing about the impact of your training in the communities in which you serve so diligently and with such passion. Thank you very much again for having me and God bless you all. Thank you.